Hello everyone, Do It Yourself Gourmet here today and we're making a sponge cake. Right now we've creamed together a stick of butter and three quarters cups of sugar, so that's 200 grams of sugar. We've also got 200 grams of pre-sifted flour that we sifted beforehand. And we've got seven ounces of buttermilk. And we have a buttermilk video if you need to show how to make that. We've also got two egg yolks and three egg whites. So, in the creaming process, after we've added the butter and sugar together, we're going to add one egg yolk and then another egg yolk right inside. Now these are good thick egg yolks right from the garden farm. So we pour that in, two generous egg yolks. There we go. And we'll cream these in as well. Now we're creaming in the thickest stuff first because we're building the strong foundation of a cake base. And that way when we, look, mix, that way when we mix in the lighter items, this is already primed and we can temper it in much like a roux is to cooking. This is to pastry and baking. Getting this set up, getting it in a nice consistency so that the sugars have already kind of let go of their crystalline structure and started working with the egg yolk and started working with the butter and starting to soften up. That's one of the reasons that chefs prefer corn syrup or simple syrup so much is that when sugar is in a liquid form it absorbs much more easily and if you take the time to work that out ahead of time in your baking you don't have to use corn syrup or simple syrup. Simple syrup is not bad because it's sugar on water but doing this to help soften the sugars up ahead of time will make the baking work on a lot of levels in a lot of places. That's the next step to the cake. We've put in the egg yolks and now what we're going to do is get our extracts. And now we're back with the extratives. I've got pure vanilla and I've got almond. We're going to make this a basic white sponge cake and we've got oh I'd say a quarter teaspoon of vanilla and then we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of almond keep it a nice even on the both. What we're going to do on this particular cake is we're going to make a fruit topping and mix it in with whipped cream so we don't want the cake to overpower too much and once we've got the extracts in we're going to make sure and mix them around nicely help them get in as well. Now the alcohol that are inside of some extracts will further help the sugars to turn into a liquid state and by now they're already doing that, as you can see with the smoothness of the mixture. And that is going to help greatly when it comes time to fold in the egg whites. Because in a lot of cakes, at this point, you'll add in egg whites just as they are. And that can go for a decent sponge cake. But if you really want to make a classical sponge cake, then you'll turn the egg whites into a meringue. And now we have a meringue video in another one of the links. but for this one, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to add the meringue next. If you want to add the egg whites as they are, go ahead, fold those in nicely. But in the next scene, you'll see what it is when we're doing the meringue. And now we're ready to mix in the cake batter with the meringue. Those whipped eggs are good to go. And we're going to take a scoop of the egg whites in. Pour them along the side and start to temper it in ever so slowly. Now tempering is a little bit of a tricky process. You got to be able to incorporate it without destroying the structure of the eggs. And that has been the key to many a fluffy cake and many a lovely souffle. And for us it's going to be the base of this sponge batter right here so that we can make a lovely sponge cake nice vanilla and almond flavor. Now you can use any kind of extract you wish mind you but that's what we've got here today folding it in over under gently and around so that it turns into a nice supple batter because that's what you want. You don't want a destroyed over whipped bunch of egg whites turning your cake batter into just another bunch of sponge. No, you gotta take time, mix it in well, 
and that will yield you good results by folding it gently and slowly and by following a scooping technique as opposed to a whisk beating or a paddle from a machine. Now mind you when people are making cakes tons at a time you have to use a machine and there's a mechanism to do it kind of nicely as well and not overwork it but when you're at home working it in get a spatula pull it around the sides and that way you make sure you know you get it nice and mixed too since you're pulling it up and around from the sides now if you can't do that use the slowest mixer that you possibly can because you got to make sure this egg white structure stays in a good place that's going to be the key to the cake we're going to add a little bit more in just a moment here but for right now we're going to work the rest of this through over and now help to smooth it just a little bit and there we're ready for the final amount of egg whites and then from there we can start working in the flour which will be the final bit along with that last bit of milk before we put it in the pans and set it to bake and by milk I do mean buttermilk now this will be just a minute left up and over gently in and out and now it probably could stand to have a little bit more of the buttermilk go in but we're going to mix this it's not a sign of it breaking at this point that's the egg structure working itself in and you'll start to see it become more cohesive as you add in the flour and now with the flour I've also mixed in the baking powder since that's the dry ingredients you kinda want to keep those together as you go it makes incorporation a lot easier and so this is almost done getting worked in and then we'll start the flour stage but the scooping mechanism pays off in a nice fluffy texture and I mean isn't cake supposed to be lovely and fluffy at least when you're doing a sponge cake if you're talking pound cake then whole other story or devil food then you know we'll get into that later but for a sponge cake work it around slow and supple get it in don't break those eggs up and you'll have yourself a winner now on the next one we'll have that flowers and now we've gotten to the part where we're going to start incorporating the flour mixture with the baking powder, two teaspoons, to the 200 grams of flour, and we're still going to start putting it into the mixture here, dust a little bit over the top, and after we do this first top bit to see how it soaks in, then we're going to add a bit more of the milk, the buttermilk, to help it catch up, and we'll do that back and forth until the batter becomes a nice cohesive homogenized cake batter still springy we're using that folding technique we're not going to lose that because that is going to be the key of nice fluffy sponge cake now we're going to mix this around keep an eye on it as we go watching our veins of flour seeing that it's not clumping up too badly anywhere you can pull them apart a little bit as needed so that they don't turn into little cake dumplings. Lift it up and over, help it get incorporated. There you go. Find those spots, work them out. You can't get over rushed at this point. This is not a rushed cake to make, but it will be worth taking the time to work out those little bits. Now, we're gonna put a little bit more of that flour on there and then work a little bit more of that buttermilk in there. What I'm looking for is the point in which the cake starts to take and we start seeing the sides and the dough to dry out just a touch so that I can add a little more of the other moisture and balancing those between each other is the key to keeping it really good. There's three keys it's the egg whites to keep the springiness, the flour to not get in there too fast, and the butter and that creamed mixture to set up well so they can accept them and turn into a nice spongy batter. That folding technique brings it all together. Take it around the sides, find those pockets. 
around the sides. You can even take it through the middle a little bit. As long as it's gentle and it's not ripping through the egg proteins. Now we're going to add a bit more here. Get our flour going. I think after this one we'll be ready to add a little bit more buttermilk. Take it as it goes and see how the cake soaks up with the dry ingredients. There you go. Getting it around the edge helps it to incorporate through. Kind of like plate tectonics as it takes it down. Little by little. Now this is where it's starting to soak it up. And we'll be adding in a bit more of that buttermilk. I can see it and feel it now in the stir. And you should be able to as well as you start to go through it. Taking those bits and those lumps out as you work the cake batter through. And that'll yield a nice product in the end. Up and over goes the fold. You want those eggs white. You want those egg whites to stay nice and happy as they go in and about. Scrape your spatula as needed. Make sure to follow that nice gentle fold because the folding is the linchpin between it all. And there, as you go, it's up and in. It absorbed it nicely. We're going to take a little more buttermilk at this point of that third cup that we have remaining. We're going to add a little bit, let it soak in with some of the cake flour. Mixture that we put together so that way it has a chance to expand and the flour has a place to go. That's not just the fat that's been building between it, but in building the flour between the fat, before we added this last bit of buttermilk, we created an elasticity with that mixture between the carbohydrates and the butter, which is the fat and the protein and the milks that were denatured a little bit to help them in strength. And this is going to be the basis. And it'll rise on it and those egg whites will support it. You can watch it as the mixture gets turned in. And then you can see it as you pour it into the pans. Now we're going to add a bit more of the flour. We got about half to go at this point. We can start being a little more liberal. Once you get past those initial stages of tempering in, you find yourself a little bit more in the clear, especially as it starts to go. It gets a little bit more forgiving. I mean, you can't completely just dump it all in at once, but you are given a little bit more leeway. One thing you want to try to avoid is mixing in the two bits at once, like milk and flour, while the flour is still about, because that will cause floaties all around. And that's not exactly what you want when you're mixing a cake batter. Especially when you're trying to get it to be all smooth. I mean, box mixes, it doesn't really matter too much. But when it comes to a sponge cake, you got a little bit of different play going on here between the stuff. So you got to take mind of all those different parts about it. There we go. I'm going to mix in some more of that flour. And I think after that, we'll do a little bit more of the buttermilk. You can feel it as it goes, and you know, if you need to take a break while you're mixing, totally understandable. Just uh, not too long of a break, because otherwise it'll start drying out, start wanting to acting like bread. And we're not making bread today. We're making a cake. And if the batter gets a little dry, get it worked in and it's okay it's a little dry. You can temper some more of that milk, buttermilk stuff back in through it once it's all mixed in cohesively. Just don't pour that milk in thinking it's going to help you out without it being smoothed in beforehand. And it'll take it nice and dry for a while, so you'll be alright if you got to dry out the batter a little bit. But doing so will prevent any lumps from being too terribly in there. And that is one of the keys to sponge. Because egg whites and lumps, they're not the greatest friends when they're cooking. Sometimes you can make a nice tunneling in a cake, but that's only when you're putting in the eggs proper hole and such. Now this is a little bit pasty, so what we're going to do now is add a bit more of that buttermilk. Pour a good bit in, maybe even the rest of it at this point. Save us. And we've got that bit of buttermilk left in. Had a battery outage there for a minute, so I had to switch them up. And we're folding that in so that it has a nice liquid texture. If you can see, nice and close, the batter is coming together well, the liquid's taking it in. That's good thick buttermilk when you make it with a mixture of heavy cream and whole milk. Then you mix these up and around. The egg whites, 
still have not lost their texture or their structure and that's crucial because sponge cakes are wonderful when they're nice and fluffy and that's one of the greatest challenges of making a good sponge cake is making sure it stays light and fluffy and so as we mix it in you can take a look the batter is smoothening out we've got just a little bit of flour to go so we're going to dust that in maybe not the whole thing keep it nice and light do it right there we go one more around and we get it up and through and this will incorporate in that last little bit of buttermilk will really help and this will be a good elastic batter to get right into the pans and then straight into the oven. You're going to bake that oven at 350 degrees. So make sure it's preheated because you're going to want it nice and evenly hot. And I would actually recommend if you can preheat it even a little more ahead of a time then you're ready to use it. That way it's had a time to equalize temperatures all throughout. That would be the stuff to do. So as we mix it, the cake batter is taking it in nicely turning it into more of a batter. Still want to have that gentle hand about it because we are dealing with the egg white structures. But now they've taken up a good portion. Just checking to make sure there's no veins of dry batter inside of there. Going to add our last little bit in. There we go. And as soon as that's mixed in, we'll add our last little bit of the buttermilk. And then after that, straight away to the pans and then into the oven. 35 minutes or thereabouts depending on which pan you use and how many cakes you split it into. Keep a good weather eye on it and make sure it has that springy middle. Once it does, take them out. Let them cool down a bit. Oh and remember, when you're filling them up, don't fill up the tins but halfway or the pans, whichever you're cooking with, because the rising of the sponge will definitely need a bit of a space to be accounted for. All right, we've got that incorporated. Gonna put in our last bit of the buttermilk. Get our spatula because waste not, want not, yonder rest sources are precious things. There we go. And let's mix it in for the final bit. And then set them to the pans. Now the pans, you're gonna wanna make sure it's a greased pan. By that I mean butter preferably, if you can do it. Otherwise, whatever type of oil suits you for it, vegetable fat, canola, they all work as long as it'll stay on the sides and cause the pan not to stick to the cake. Because sticking cake to the pan is not the most fun. You want to be able to eat as much of it as you possibly can. All right, we've got that nice and mixed in, checked on it in the middle. Gonna mix that up, get our pans over here. Actually, they're glass bowls and then we'll set them to bake. And we are at the glorious stage now. Before we put them in the oven, we've got about, oh, let's say about 22 to 24 ounces of batter right here. And so we've got two six inch bowls that we're going to bake them in. You fill them up halfway when you're doing a sponge cake and you want to be rather gentle with the sponge as you're doing it. That way it doesn't get overworked It'd be a shame to lose it at the last minute after you work so hard to get it there. Take your time and put it in. Help it to the sides a little bit. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure not to beat it up and down to try and get it to settle in place. Give it time if it needs it. You can take a couple of minutes before you put it into the oven if it needs be. Point being, let that sponge have a chance to settle and don't use anything artificial or try and pound it out with gravity to get it to move any quicker. Because that is the sponge's worst enemies and all those bad stories you heard about souffles usually happen when the egg whites get treated rather poorly. So we can prevent that by making sure and giving them a good time when you're pouring them into the containers that they're going to be cooking in. We're almost there. We got them settled. Now you can give them a little bit of help. You know, you help them push to the side a little bit if you need to. It doesn't have to be completely hands off, but gentle is the way of the walk when it comes to a sponge cake. I'm going to give those about three to five minutes to rest and settle out. And then they're going straight into the oven 
at 350 degrees for a good 30 minutes. And now we're at the happy moment where we can open the oven, take the cakes, slide them right in, set that timer to 35 minutes, and see how they come when they look out. I have got the rack one up from the middle, and we'll see ya. And now we are back at the final stage. This has been 35 minutes. What I'm going to do now is turn off the oven and let them sit in the oven for about five more minutes with the oven off. That way the carryover cooking with the residual heat can help them to finish off, which I will then take them out, cover them, and let them rest. All right, here we are at the final bit. We've got our two round six inch cakes. We've let them rest probably about 10 minutes after all, not just five. The oven has been off and they're ready to pull out and put a nice little bit of a towel over it. That way we can take a look, see what it's going to look like. Do it yourself gourmet folks. This is the cake and we'll see you next time.